Researchers at UVM are breaking ground in robot research. They've simulated a population of baby robots that developed into more sophisticated robots through a process that's similar to natural selection. Josh Bongard is instrumental in that research. He's here to talk with us about it now. Josh, thanks for joining us. Sure. Um, you know, ever since the dawn of the space age, people have been talking about having robots in the home or interacting with robots. I think we've, the closest we've come to is that little disc that runs around your house and that helps right. vacuum. Why, why, have, why hasn't the leap come? What's been the, the, the holdup, really? Right, so we've been promised robots for 40, 50 years. Um, where is Rosie, the, the robot from the Jetsons? Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why is we don't quite know how to build machines that are adaptive, that are able to get along well in the real world where things are always changing. We're very good at building industrial robots, very complex machines, but industrial robots do exactly the same thing over and over again. They're designed for a task, and then they exactly. accomplish that task. That's right. Well, this part of the car door and, and nothing else. So we're very good uh, on the engineering side. We can build very complex machines, but what's missing in robotics is understanding how animals and humans get along in the real world. And taking that natural... That, Things that happen in that natural realm and transferring them into the technology, the technological realm. That's right. That's is right. That, is that kind of what your research is, is attempting to figure out, try to meld those lines? Yeah. So a lot of the research in, in my group takes inspiration from uh, natural evolution, natural selection, as you mentioned, um, which is a process that produced adaptive machines. Those machines happen to be built out of carbon rather than silicon. But we know uh, we have some ideas about how evolution has produced adaptive adaptive, maybe intelligent uh, animals, can we take that principle and build it into a supercomputer? So most of the research um, that I do is conducted inside a virtual world. So the physical robot that you see here yeah, this little, this, is the, this is the little end product that you have here. We're seeing right. video as well that, that looks similar to this. This is obviously in a smaller scale or technologically wise in a smaller scale. That's right. What That's are you right. finding when you're doing these, these tests, these theoretical tests? So what we find is what we're usually trying to do is evolve robots or breed robots that can do very simple tasks. You mentioned the disc like robot, which is uh, the Roomba, the robot vacuum cleaner. Right. doesn't do anything more sophisticated than, uh, than vacuum. So our simple robots here, we're trying to get them to do simple tasks like find an object in their environment, pull that object and place it somewhere else. You can imagine building a dozen of these robots, put them on a construction site and have them clean up the construction site overnight. Or move down a road overnight and fill in the potholes. Or perhaps more topical today, um, plow snow. That's the kind of, of robots that we're trying to create. Are you seeing that, how far away are you seeing the potential for a practical application to what you're working on theoretically? Right, so that's still several years down the road, but again, we're starting to see robot vacuum cleaners now. There are robots out there that will um, that will cut your grass. Um, hopefully, robot snow plows won't be far behind. But what inspired you to get into robotics research? Um, one of the things that, that really excites me about robotics is its research or discovery at the interface between um, different areas of science. So there's a lot of engineering that goes into this, a lot of math, computer science, but also ideas from biology and psychology and philosophy. What does it mean to be adaptive? What does it mean to be intelligent, get along well uh, in the real world? So so my work is just one example of interdisciplinary research that's that's going on at UVM today. Now, of course, anybody who's a fan of science fiction knows the horror stories of what happens when machines get too smart. So, you know, we're attempting to, to, to build these, you know, smart machines or machines right. that can learn or can adapt should we? I mean, I mean, you, I mean obviously that's right. the fantastical, but right. But should we do that? Uh, it's a very good question. Obviously, when we're dealing with robotics, ethics always comes up. Should we building? Should we build machines that can think, even if it's very at a very low level for themselves? Um, it's an important question. Um, in the 80s, when personal computers were starting to appear in people's homes and offices, people asked at the time, "Are computers going to put everybody out of work?" Uh, obviously, it turned out very differently. So I think in the future we're going to see a very different, uh, a similar story with robots where we have technology and people working alongside one another rather than one side uh, taking over. Yeah. And as, as with any new technology or anything, it's, it's how you apply it as opposed to what happens when you discover it that is the important thing. Absolutely. That's right. Josh Bongard at UVM, thank you very much. Fascinating stuff and look forward to seeing what you come up with next. My pleasure. Thanks, Mike.